All right, let's get right into it. So the first pair that I have, these are the Danner Mountain 700s. And probably not a whole lot of fan for it for the sneaker because it's pretty much a sneaker boot built for hiking and built for the outdoors. It's not really one that sneaker heads, I think, really care about. I think Danner is definitely a brand to keep your eye on, especially if you like outdoor hikers or boots in general. They just make really high quality stuff. And jumping to something similar, these are the Obra Mars. I don't know what they're actually called. Just kidding. These are the Obra Mars Outdoor 1.0s. And as you can see, this is pretty much a Tom Sachs Marjar bootleg. It's a very cool sneaker just because there's nothing else on the market that basically replicates the Marjards by Tom Sachs. This was kind of the next closest option for myself if I ever wanted something like the Marjards to be in my collection. Another weird one from Obra, these are a bootleg of the Jordan 1s. Obviously with the Obra logo instead of the Nike swoosh. And these are supposed to kind of recreate the Union Jordan 1 high with that cut and sew feel of two colorways on one specific collaboration. Kind of a weird one. These are actually dead stock just because I thought I would like them a lot more. I ended up just not really feeling drawn to them because again, I think because it's a bootleg. Okay, and last one from Obra. These are actually very cool. And this is one that I actually do try to wear more often. These are the Chuck 70s by Obra. Obviously it's just the Chuck 70. All that's different is there's a Nike swoosh on this Chuck 70. I think LeBron was actually actually spotted wearing a custom very similar to this made by I think CPFM. Obviously this is the more obtainable version. Really glad to have this pair in my collection just because it's so different from anything that's out there. I don't think that this sneaker will ever actually happen in the real world. You can see the CPFM smileys instead of the all-star logos on both sides of the sneakers. Just a very cool pair that again because I think you'll never see actually happen in the real world this is just a keeper in my collection and it's also my only pair of Chuck 70s. All right, and next, moving on to some dunk by yous. These are the J Studio Nike Dunk Lows. Obviously, you can see these are the N7 Dunk by yous. Very cool. I, I think the Dunk by yous, the quality is just absolutely insane for the materials that Nike puts on these. Definitely worth getting instead of a Nike Dunk GR if you ever have the chance to. These, I kind of was inspired by like a reverse Papa Bear kind of look. I don't think it really is a reverse Papa Bear Dunk Low. Still, I think just a very cool custom and honestly, a very easy sneaker to wear. Kind of a corny detail. <laughs> These actually have Jay's Studio embossed into the leather on the tongue. I had no idea what else to put there and I honestly didn't think I'd be able to check out because Dunk By You windows are very small before they sell out. These are the Jay's Studio Dunk Lows. One of one. And another Dunk By You that is definitely not a one of one. These are the Syracuse Nike by you dunk lows. And obviously these retroed recently, but I just assumed that I would have no chance to get a dunk low with the original color blocking from the college pack of dunk lows. I'm totally okay with this not being the official release from Nike, just because dunk by you materials are so much better than general release materials. You get the same aesthetic out of all of these other than the Obra ones that I kind of regret. This is probably the next biggest regret or the only regret that I really have in my collection. So these are the Jordan 1 bootlegs by Leon Shu. This is actually a bootleg of the Initial D Jordan 1 high that was worn in the anime itself. And even though I don't watch Initial D, I just thought it was a cool concept of taking something from the anime and turning it into an actual sneaker in real life. These are definitely wearable, but I just feel weird wearing a Jordan 1 bootleg because like I mentioned, I'm not super into Jordan 1s and having a bootleg again just kind of goes against the purest in me. These are all right. All right, and last pair in this section, this is just one I forgot from the collaboration section. So these are the size New Balance 550s. And this is from like their college pack. I think it's supposed to be like a Syracuse inspired sneaker. This is the only other 550 that I have in my collection. This is a very beautiful 550 that not a lot of people know about. I think the most infamous 550s are definitely the ALDs. I like having something that's a little bit more low key, still also kind of under the radar. I think this pair just looks really good on feet. And welcome to the grails section of the video. Actually, before we get into the grails in my collection, one sneaker that I just forgot to leave in the GR section, the Yeezy 700 V1 Analogs. This is a very beautiful sneaker. I think just a very good Yeezy to have, especially since I don't want to spend $300 on the Wave Runners. Just a nice, chunky white sneaker and it's super easy to wear. I also love how these are actually pretty comfortable. And I think a fitting sneaker to kick off the actual grills in my collection the Amo Manier Jordan 3s. 
So I think I mentioned in a previous video that I honestly thought these might have been a little bit overrated when they came out in, I think, 2021, and it was everyone's sneaker of the year. Actually having these in hand, I, again, I can definitely see why these were so many people's sneakers of the year. And yeah, if anything, I would say that this is as close to a perfect shoe as you could get. And the Jordan 3s being my favorite Jordan model, and this being such a great collaboration with quality materials, storytelling, and just overall execution and how wearable these are, I absolutely love this sneaker. And I'm so happy to actually have this in my collection. And I actually got this pair through a trade. And the sneakers I got were another grail I'll show you later, but one that I traded away was the Lemonade Off-White Air Force One. So the all yellow Air Force Ones by Virgil. I think it was a pretty great trade for me just because I think I definitely wear this pair and the other girl pair I'll show you later. Way more than I ever would have worn those Air Force Ones. And the other pair included in the off-white Air Force One trade, a plastic bag. Obviously not really, but the packaging on this pair is super, super cool. And these are the off-white Air Jordan 2 lows and the Varsity Red colorway. Hopefully you can see why I pulled that trade to be able to get this pair in the Alma Minier 3s. I'm just very happy with the outcome of that deal. Honestly, this pair, you can saw with the plastic bag and kind of the tissue paper wrap. The design inspiration behind this pair is so cool that Virgil, I think, wanted to design something that would look like if you pulled an original Air Jordan 2 out of the archives and what they would look like. This is kind of the result that you get and it even comes down to how each shoe is individually wrapped in tissue paper and they each come in their own individual plastic bag as well. With the crumbling midsole details, MJ signature, and of course your classic off-white hang tag, laces, and medial side detailing. This is just a huge grill for my Myself. Again, even though twos aren't even my own personal favorite, all the details, the storytelling, and the inspiration behind this pair really just, they all add up to a really special sneaker and one that I think will just stay in my collection forever. Actually, come to think of it, with Nike's whole Reimagined series kicking off, I think they totally just took Virgil's idea and inspiration from this sneaker of hey, what would a Jordan look like if you pulled it out of the archives today? Kind of funny thinking about it now because the lost and found gets all this praise, but really it seems like the design comes from Virgil himself. So something to think about. And funnily enough, another plastic bag. So obviously this is the other colorway of the off-white Jordan 2 Low, the black and Varsity Blues. This to me is a super underrated sneaker. I think it's just as good as the white and Varsity Red pair. I think just because it's not in your classic Bulls colors, it's a chunky black sneaker. People don't really like this as much, especially with kind of style trends today. But honestly, I think this is a really great pair as well. One that I threw into my girls collection just because you can really feel all the quality and all the details on this pair of shoes, just as much as you can feel them on the white and Varsity Red pair. Oh yeah, little details like the signature on the white and varsity red pair is in a different location than the black and varsity blue pair. Super thoughtful, really just everything you're looking for in a grail pair of sneakers. And the last Jordan grail that I have in my collection, these are the white Oreo Air Jordan 4s. And the reason this is in my girls collection is just because I never thought I would get my hands on a limited GR Jordan 4, but now I have so many pairs. This one really kickstarted it all. And I was able to get these for retail off of exclusive access when these first dropped. Since I was able to get this pair so early, it actually let me make a styling video for it that I was able to drop before the actual release. And I really think that this pair helped contribute to a lot of success that I've seen on my channel. And even though my channel is so small, I really attribute a lot of that to just having one very successful video. And that's all thanks to getting this pair super early. So because of that history for kind of my own personal growth and the growth of this channel, I think this pair just has a lot of sentimental value for myself. And not only that, it's one of the easiest sneakers in my collection to wear. And just continuing on with another Nike grill, these are the off-white Dunk Lows, lot two of 50. And to me, this is such a beautiful sneaker. Everyone loves the suede versions of these, but I honestly think that the leather version is a little bit better. I think the leather versions just suit the Dunk model better overall. The suede looks a little too hairy and looks a little bit out of place, especially because Dunks do look a little bit more rugged, and I definitely feel like the leather fits that aesthetic a little bit more. This is just such a beautiful color. I don't think Nike's ever done a release like the 50 Dunk Lows that Virgil did. Honestly, I feel like looking back at that project, it was a lot more special than how people felt about it when they first came out. I showed you an earlier colorway of this, but this is the Tom Sachs general purpose shoe 
in the studio colorway. No, the sulfur ones didn't make my grails collection, but I did mention that that model is my contender for sneaker of the year in 2022. Honestly, in this colorway, it's just such a gorgeous shoe on such a great model. Again, the utility, rugged aesthetics, and all the design language that's seen throughout the shoe. I just think this is such a great sneaker. And like I mentioned, as someone who couldn't possibly get their hands on a pair of Marjards at a reasonable price, I think this is the next best thing. And I think this sneaker will age really, really well over time. And the last Grail sneaker in my collection from Nike, these are the Nike Dunk Low. UNCs. This is a pair that I've wanted since seventh grade, just finally being able to get my hands on it after like 20, not 20, after like 15 years or something along those lines. It's just kind of unreal to me still that these are in my collection. That color blocking on the Dunk Low, the UNC blue, just everything about it. I love the simplicity of it all. Just a beautiful sneaker and one that is very sentimental to myself. I know this probably doesn't speak to a lot of people, but for me, this is just a personal pair that I love so much and one that I really don't think I'll ever get rid of. And even though I like wearing all my sneakers, it's one that I just feel like is too precious to wear just because I wanna keep them fresh and I want them to last a very long time. And now that we've gotten through all the Nikes, there is actually a pair of Crocs in my Grails set. And these are the Selene Benberry Crocs in the Crocodile colorway. Initially, I really wasn't a fan of how bright this green was, but after hitting on these as my only raffle win for this set of releases, the green has really, really grown on me. And actually watching another YouTuber called Jim, uh, he mentioned that this really reminded him of like the Grinch Kobe 6s. Honestly, they're pretty close. And being someone who's never been able to get the Kobe 6 Grinches, this started as a nice consolation prize, but now I think the sneaker or croc or whatever you want to call it actually stands out on its own. And I think this will definitely be a very big statement sneaker for sneaker history as a whole. So the Salehi Crocs in the Crocodile colorway. Kicking it over to New Balance again. And these are the Performance Art 993s by Joe Fresh Goods in the pink colorway. One of the best sneakers to release this year. I know a lot of people like the sage green color, but honestly, this pink pair is so much better, and I think it really is the statement of this collection of 993s. This pink is just so beautiful. I know a lot of people, again, like the green pair because of how wearable they seemed, but again, I feel like I gravitate kind of towards those statement sneakers, and this is definitely one of those. I really don't think that you see a lot of pink New Balances like this, especially in this pastel shade of pink. It is just so pretty to me and definitely one that I'm very happy to have and happy to call a grail as well. And moving forward from there, I think a sneaker that is probably very boring to a lot of people, but one that I just really love. And these are the Todd Snyder 992s. Believe these dropped last year. That's when kind of New Balance stopped making 992s. There hasn't been a single 992, I think, in 2022, which is unfortunate because it's one of New Balance's better models. There are enough details to make this kind of Todd Schneider's own take on the 992s. I just really had to include a great pair of New Balances in my girls' collection. And this pair, I think, is just one that is so easy to wear for myself. I just love the quality and details and the effort put into this pair from Todd Snyder. Even though I'm not a big fan of Todd Snyder as a brand, it's ridiculously expensive and the style really isn't my style. I love how sneakers are that medium that allows two worlds to kind of collide and allow me to appreciate something made by a brand I usually wouldn't wear. And last but not least, even though I recently got on this pair, I already like this pair so, so much. And I think it's so vastly underrated because of how late it released in this year. And maybe because it's the last sneaker of this collection, I just feel like this sneaker is very vastly underrated. And these are the basement 2002 R's in that gray colorway. And initially I wasn't very sure about this sneaker, but the more pictures I saw, the more it just kind of grew on me. The kind of capstone of that was a post by the basement themselves, describing kind of the design language that they wanted to take with this colorway. Specifically, the entire basement collection of 2002 R's, I believe they wanted to do something where it was kind of a modern rugged take on the New Balance 2002 R. This gray pair specifically, I believe was actually designed first because they wanted to do a take on the classic gray from New Balance and really make it their own. And I think that they've done that to a T. There's definitely still that appeal of the classic New Balance gray, but the rugged, again, rubberized materials, the black heel counter, mud guard, it just really becomes the basement's own sneaker. And again, kind of a community designed and inspired sneaker. The rugged materials combined with that classic New Balance gray, I think this is just a spectacular sneaker and one that I'm very happy to instantly throw into my set of grails that I have for myself. 
and definitely one of my top sneakers for 2022. So I think that's it. Uh, that is basically my entire sneaker collection. I know this video is probably running on very long and I feel like a lot of sneaker collection videos actually get pretty boring because it's just like, hey, look at all my stuff. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed all my stuff, but if this is all that you're here for, thanks so much for tuning in. And again, thanks so much for tuning in. Like and a sub go a long way. Feel free to comment your thoughts on either my own collection or let me know what a favorite pair in your collection is. And if you agree with any of my hot takes for any of these sneakers. So again, thanks so much. This is fun to make. I'll catch you in the next one. Uh, you're still here. What are you still doing here? Ow! Hey, you're still here, so I imagine you're still interested in some of the sneakers I have in my collection. So let's get into the last part. Cool. So this is actually one I forgot to include because they arrived like day of, but this is one of the collaborative pairs that just arrived. And these are the, I honestly don't know how to say it, the Jack, Jackamoose? The Jackamoose? <laughs> the Jackmoose? The Jackamus? The football, <laughs> the pink football sneakers. <laughs> I'm just gonna look it up. Jack Moose. All right, so these are the Jack Moose Nike Air Himaras, obviously in that super bright pink colorway. I honestly really love these. I know the majority of people probably don't care about a bright pink sneaker, but I think these are gorgeous. I think the shade of pink is really kind of that statement. It's also a very, very unique sneaker. On this kind of custom model that Jack Moose was able to do for the Nike Air Himara, obviously changing the upper completely and wrapping the midsole in suede, I think the pink really allows that custom silhouette to really shine and stand out. Just a really great statement sneaker. I think these look way better on foot than in hand. I say this a lot, but honestly a very underrated sneaker. Uh, the next one, a fake pair of the UCLA Dunk Lows. Thank you, Cody. Uh, these are a fake pair from the Philippines and honestly, it's just a fun one to have. I don't really mind having a fake sneaker in my collection just because there's really no guilt when you do want to beat up a pair of sneakers. And like I mentioned, the UNC Dunk Lows are a personal grail for myself. Having a pair in that same color blocking in a pretty similar color that I can beat up and not feel guilty about is one that I'll happily accept into my collection. And honestly, they don't look too bad and they feel pretty sturdy as well. Like I can't just bend these in half like uh, some of the worst fakes out there. Feel free to judge me, leave a comment if you disagree with having fake sneakers in your collection. And yeah, I guess last one to cap off Nike and Jordans. These are my white cement threes from 2010. And this is really the pair that really got me into sneakers way back then. I had bought a pair of Jordan 6s, I think the Jordan 6 Lakers back in the day, but this is the pair that really got me super passionate about sneakers. Since day one, I've been super excited about this pair. Putting them on feet, it just, it felt different than any other sneaker that I had owned previously. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited for the Reimagine release that's coming up this year. I, I've had so many memories in this pair of sneakers and I think you can really see how important this pair is to me just because I've gotten into sneakers and out of sneakers maybe two or three times now and this pair is still with me. There are a lot of sentimental reasons for that. If I were to pick, this might be the best sneaker of all time for myself. All right, and the real last section of this video are the clogs that I have and the other foam sneakers that kind of fall into that realm of sneakers or footwear in general. So this first one, these are the Keto Wears Jaguar X runners. Yeah, the Keto Wears Fossil X. I think that's the actual name of these. These are just such a crazy foam sneaker. They actually don't come with this Crocs band that I added myself, but they do have holes for bands. If you happen to buy like the Fossil X and they don't fit, well, you can definitely just buy your own Crocs band and there you go, custom fit for your Keto Wears foam sneakers. These are very crazy. They actually look pretty good on feet and that's the reason why they're kind of still in my collection. Even though I do have the Aero Rat Foam Runners, I think this is still a very unique sneaker to have. I should have thrown this into like the bootleg section, but yeah, I, I think a very unique pair. The only reason why these aren't as loved by myself is mainly because of the traction, because it just feels like there wasn't that much thought that went into the traction design of this sneaker. And honestly, I feel like you'll probably be slipping a lot if you actually wear this out. I feel like this will smooth out very quickly over time. But yeah, a very unique one in my collection. 
Also a crazy foam sneaker. These are the San Juan's Crocs collaboration. I think these are called shoes for your shoes for the collaboration name because you can see it's basically just a classic croc within this entire outsole that is basically another sneaker. And you can actually fit other sneakers within this outer shell, which I have actually been seeing a lot more of for like these rubber guards that go over like some of the Solomons I've been seeing on IG. This is actually a pair I'm looking to sell just because I really don't wear it because I haven't figured out how to style a sneaker as big as this. And they're just such a weird aesthetic. One that's cool to have, but one that I might be letting go very soon. Again, just because I don't wear it that often. And next, two that I think are good to move into, but these are the Salehi Bemberry Crocs in the, in the Kawada and the Tide colorways. I still love uh, this collection by Salehi Bembury, even though the releases started out pretty choppy and like basically only resellers are able to get their hands on these, but they have improved over time. And these are actually both cops for retail. Pretty cool sneakers. I think just a very unique design that I think is really, really groundbreaking for foam sneakers. The two foam sneakers that I think really define this era of foam clogs and different types of footwear are the Salehi Crocs and of course the foam runners. But for both of these, I, I think I'm just happy to be able to have these for retail. Just very unique foam sneakers that I'm happy to have. So yeah, I'm kind of tired of hearing myself say that I'm very happy to have these in my collection, but I really am appreciative of all these pairs. And another pair that has some sentimental value for myself, these are the Beams Crocs collab. They're utility clog with, uh, of course, Beams' own touch, so you can see like utility pockets and zippers all on the upper of this croc. And this one's a little bit sentimental just because I wasn't planning on buying this shoe. I ended up hitting a raffle accidentally. I wore these all up and down some mountains in Hawaii, so that'll kind of be forever with me for this pair of Crocs. Overall, I think a very cool kind of tech wear clog to have in the collection. Again, something that's more unique. These are basically my like errands slippers if I need to go out and get the mail now. And the second to last Croc that I'll showcase for my collection, these are the Grip Swainy Croc Uggs. Okay, they're not actually Uggs, but obviously inspiration looks like it's taken from Uggs. I recently wore these to Seattle in the snow. And this is a very, very cool sneaker that, one that, again, isn't for everyone. Honestly, just to me, a very unique piece of footwear. A very unique sneaker that stands out. Basically a sneaker boot that is really great for the winter. Obviously camping inspired. I love how it comes with its own light. Just a very cool croc. So finally, the last croc in my collection. These are the Pleasures Classic Clogs. Obviously, this is their Halloween release, one that I've been after since, I think, 2019. I wanted their original black and skeleton pair back in the day. I ended up sleeping on them because Crocs weren't as big as they are today. Since they released the Realtree camo, I honestly thought that these were better than the original black and just plain skeleton pair. Very cool pair. One that I think I need to wear a lot more, or one that I will be wearing a lot more in spring and summer. Very cool croc. Okay, and the second to last pair, finally for this video, these are the ALD Garden Mules. And I know you're probably thinking, why would anyone like this banana looking mule? Honestly, I keep saying this too, they look a lot better on feet. If you really need something that's easy to wear and you're looking for just kind of a bright statement, mule or clog, these give you a really interesting style when they are on feet because as you can see, they're not a classic sneaker. The bright yellow actually isn't that bright on foot. Very similar to the Lightning Jordan 4s and the Dark Sulfur Tom Sachs GPS. This one I think just gives you a nice pop of color for your fit. Very easy to style, honestly very comfortable and mules just give you a very casual and clean look to any outfit that you're trying to put together too. We're reaching the end here so I just want to say thanks again so much if you're actually still tuning into this video. This is probably nearing an hour now. Really appreciate you if you're actually watching this and if you enjoy this content. So if you feel so inclined, liking a sub go a long way. Thank you so much for staying tuned for the ride. And yeah, really hope you enjoyed kind of the showcase of my own sneaker collection. Honestly, if you have your own collection, would love to hear about any of your top sneakers. I think everyone has their own unique take on sneakers and, you know, everything in life in general. This is the last pair for this video and these are the New Balance, I think they're just called the New Balance Clogs. So yeah, the New Balance Clogs. I think these only dropped in Korea so far. 
I don't know if we'll actually see a US release, but these were also a very sentimental gift from my girlfriend who was actually in Korea. So being able to get an overseas cop like this is kind of unreal and something I think sneakerheads only hear about these days. Very cool that I do have my hands on a pair of these. If you're listening to this and if these do end up dropping in the States, I would highly recommend going probably a full size down because they only come out in full sizes and I went a mistake and went true to size and they're just like an inch too big. New Balance clogs to wrap up my entire sneaker collection. Again, thank you so much. That is all I got. So I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.